yes, I'm here to talk about how do we encode our values into our economic systems. And let me start by imagine two companies. One is curing diabetes, and the other one is creating diabetes. If you see the financial metrics of those companies, they have the exact same financial metrics, like revenue, the profits, everything is the same. But one is killing people and one is curing disease. And we markets right now kind of value those financially the same. And that is crazy. Like, isn't it that against kind of human nature and against how things should be? And I think right now, this is like a system that humanity actually created. And markets right now, or this current system, has no mechanism to actually correct for our values or encourage positive actions or encourage communities to actually develop their own mechanisms and their own values and what they should be uh, working towards. And our society currently runs on very, very extractive mechanisms. Um, they run on fossil fuels and obsessive growth without any reason. And actually, this is how society career operates that. But if we were to design mechanisms on our economy from scratch again, would that be the case? Or would it be for positive outcomes to be at the core of our economic thinking and driving positive actions and driving the different ways of how do we coordinate, what value do we want to create, and what jobs do we want to engage in? But who is Ali? Well, um, I, I've been working on from nonprofits to startups to VC, now impact DAOs, and all trying to find the intersection between different roads and different perspectives of how do we achieve the most impact. Right now, that looks like working at 50 years, supporting both portfolio founders in, in 50 years, as well as like, founders in general, like around the world. How do we actually support them in creating these inspiring ambitions? And we do everything we, we can do to actually increase their odds of success at achieving these positive outcomes in the world. And so we all agreed already that positive outcomes, or at least hope so, that we agreed, that positive outcomes should be at the core of our economic system. But how do we, how do we get there? Right now, one of the, like, the gold standards is like, that kind of like shitty company doing killing people, um, giving a spare of their profits, like one subset of it, towards this philanthropic arm to reduce hunger or to make up for carbon markets or different things. So you're seeing like there the but, uh, most subsets of their externalities are towards positive things, while their negative externalities are actually orders of magnitude bigger than the positive impact they're achieving through their philanthropic arm. But if we re-engineer the incentives, and we, as we have seen with Impact House or with um, different startups that we, and founders that we support, if profits generate mostly positive externalities, then we only have a subset of negative outcomes that we have to make up for. And we can use that small philanthropic arm to actually make up for those externalities. This is a world where we kind of like engineer the railroads that keep us on track towards the positive actions that humans actually value. So if I see value in the ecology, in human health, in human thriving, I see that value, we give that monetary value, so that then that incentivizes the actions and the ways of um, operating a company or a project or um, whatever activity you do. And then you, are, you can actually create what humans value. And even we, by being part of this system, even if you're a bad actor, or if you just care about like growing your economic profits or different things, you're actually create, driven by your self-interest, but producing positive in outcomes in the world, just by the way the, the system is designed. So for example, if you have an economy that's backed by nature, you're, of course, you increase your economic outcome, increase your financial measurement, whatever, but if it's bad by nature, it also increases our ability to plant more trees, to care for nutrients, to care for the, um, the ecological system. And I think Web3 tools are one of those tools that could actually enable us to achieve that and to achieve these positive sum worlds. And I want to start with one of the questions that um, I am particularly excited about. How do we embed regeneration much earlier in the stack? Much so that it actually drives our actions forward. And, but before even encoding our values into our economic systems, we need to come into coherence into what do we actually want to make decisions on? How do we collectively decide what's important to us and how do we actually act on it? So 
previously governance systems were based on the assumption that the social contracts or different things were meant to be for a like, huge groups of individuals like nation states and prolonged for a long term. But here we actually have small communities integrating different governance mechanisms to push the decision choices to, to the edges, to the crowd, or to give the decision power to the experts. So these are like evolutionary, always iterative decision making mechanisms that we can implement, iterate, or change based on the outcomes of the team or of the project. And where, where do we implement these decision making mechanisms? Into microeconomies. With digital currencies, we have the choice to design new token engineering systems that allows us to encode align individual incentives with collective outcomes. One of these, as I mentioned, is like, for example, if you have a, a currency that 40% of it or 50 is backed by nature, by natural capital currencies, the more money is, like the more currency is flowing, the more our ability to care for nature. And this can be further improved by like tying smart contracts to um, positive behaviors in ecological assets with digital, uh, like, imaging, satellite imaging, different sensors, etc. And then now, this is the hard part. How do we embed our values into different forms of capital? How do we translate the value of what we want to see in the world, what we want to create more, into the monetary system that our world currently operates at, that we actually are able to transact and like produce these economic flows? So let's go back to our paradox. Remember the city company that was killing people with diabetes? and the co positive company have almost the same, like, the same financial metrics. Of course, there's some extra costs on like local uh, supply chains, local, uh, local ingredients, or giving health to their employees, etc. Now, but this is not actually how the world looks like. This is not actually the outcomes that are coming out of these companies. It's just the monetary metrics that our current systems operate by. What if we actually saw the world in the real outcomes that came by? Um, this is including all the negative externalities like deforestation, sickness, fossil fuels created are in the positive social gains of the, these companies. And now we have a real math solution where it's more negative externalities shown. And I think one of the problems here is also both one, the timing, and then two, the um, detachment or separation from the outcomes. For what I mean by timing is that often we work on public goods on different positive outcomes or, or even like climate change, for example, it took us years to realize the, out, like, the um, consequences of our actions. And then detachment, what if I am a company planting trees in the Amazon, but we're living here in the US, like we cannot actually, in, t in our internal balance sheet, we don't actually internalize that change. So there's this both missing timing on like feedback loops that enables us to both internalize and gain the different negative of positive externalities that will guide our actions. And how do we actually make one of the potential ways in which we could achieve this to give monetary outcomes to um, different values and ways of things we want to see in the world is using on and off chain data to define, measure, verify and transact these often unmeasurable actions or projects or outcomes. Many times it is measurable into in markets to create impact driven markets so that you're part of the system and all you transact is actually the actions and the values and the experiences and the changes you're creating in the world rather than just purely financial mechanisms. And one of the flywheels there is first, we define the what we value and how much we value it. Um, for example, what if we value sustainability? We can create a bonus multiplier on our performance whenever you do sustainable actions. What if we value people who are doing the, say, soft work like the hyperconnectors, the weavers. We could use include systems like Coordinate that actually value people more holistically for every single one of their contributions. We then track and measure what we value, because what gets tracked and measured gets done. And then we assign monetary value to those often measurable actions. So we kind of collectively use the governance mechanisms to design what is valuable for our individual community, our sovereign community. And then we kind of create these figure groups to increase the amount of um, like visibility that these actions have, and then we create incentives such as retroactive funding to actually fund these actions. Because most of the funding right now is going to proactively incentivize actions, but a lot of the things we need to shift is like reactively, uh, pro retroactively giving back to those people who are achieving change. And then I also want to touch on this part. 
I know we're in Panda Commons, and it's a lot about mechanism design, the, um, a lot of algorithms, incentives, mathematical, technical things. But I think something that's really important about Web3, and I've seen it along with like this new thinking on impact DAOs, on economic systems, decentralized societies, is that Web3 actually, by giving us these tools to create these new digital currencies, to embed our value into different forms of capital, and to create di uh, digital nations, like outside of nation states or communities, just to experiment, allows us to radically imagine new ways to create society, to how we transfer value and how value flows. I think like, what, it's hugely important that, because it also reignites our capacity as creators, our, our role as creators of like, what we want to see in the world. And we, before, we had like a textbook way of understanding economics, understanding value flows, towards which I think in some ways kind of like leads to scarcity whenever you don't own like many financial means. While it is, it should be a, a metric, a proxy for abundance of like, oh, I have this to give, I'm creating this value and I give it to you and then we're exchanging it. And we can actually nest these digital different actions and these this, this small microeconomies together towards that we scale globally. And one thing else is it reignites our capacity to imagine, to imagine new ways of thinking, new ways of coordinating, new ways of valuing the actions people are doing. And imagine that we don't have to rely on like one monetary, like monoculture of currencies, but rather like a plurality of ways to measure and transact money. And then I think this is like one of the concepts that we need both things at the same time. We need two complementary elements that are essential for a positive sound world. We need to inspire action because that's what will ultimately inspire people to create these changes, to wake up and to lead. But we also need that to send incentives so that these actions are fueled by the economy and by how we operate in the world and how people actually assign and define value of those actions and those outcomes. And I think this is the important part. We have to do both at the same time. And let's create a world where companies doing good have an unfair advantage to actually make those issues come a reality. That's something we're very, very interested in 50 years. Like we try to bring them whole of, of support we, uh, we can bring to the companies, both like monetary, financial, and just like, but in reality, it's more about like motivational, strategic, business side of things, stuff like that. But in more broadly, bringing into the world these more different ways of valuing outcomes and monetary value. And this like a world driven by impact markets, impact certificates and different ways to actually transact what we wanna see true in the world. Now, finally, if you're working on one of these five frameworks, um, governance mechanisms, tokenomic systems, nested microeconomies, values and depth into our economic systems or impact certificates or any other sixth, seventh, eighth or 10th way uh, that we could actually create these uh, worlds, uh, let's reach out to me. Let's create something together. One thing that I've learned about being in the Web3 space and in general this like, um, new kind of thinking space is that it is very much a collaborative, ecosystem-driven uh, perspective where we don't only value like one, what is the leading strategy, what is the best strategy, what is um, like numbers or metrics, but rather we value the depth of impact, the leverage point we're actually achieving to shift perspectives, shift mindsets, and shift um, how we operate in the world. So it's no longer about just like producing products or services or something like that, but it's also about like producing the railroads that will guide us towards the right direction. And when producing the railroads, people can come in with their whole perspective, experience, expertise, but also with more imagination and co uh, spirit of collaboration and cooperation. And that's how I've seen Impact DAOs succeed, how, how I've seen the founders succeed um, when they help out each other. And I want to create this with like every single nuance that we can implement for different communities. Thank you. <laughs>